Hello gringos and welcome to another video. When this pandemic is over, I think a lot of us are gonna have the urge to travel but not necessarily the money to go with it, right? So today I just kinda wanted to give you some pointers on how you can make your trips last longer without breaking the bank. So let's get right into this. It all starts with a cheap flight, right? So to make sure that you get the best deal possible, you wanna book them in advance. You're gonna to wanna to book the international flights about four to five months in advance, and if you're flying domestic, about seven to eight weeks. So what you need to do first to travel cheap is just to save a small amount of money and book your flight. You can worry about all the other expenses later. Just make sure you book that flight so you have something to look forward to. Of course, that also means that when it comes time to travel, you won't have the price of your flight looming over you because you would have paid it many months back. For cheap accommodation, you need to stay at hostels. I'm definitely biased to talk about hostels because I love them so much. You make friends that last a lifetime, you make them quite fast, you get insights from other travelers about their plans, where they're going, where they've been. During the day, hostels generally also have some group activities so you can see the sites with other people, if that's your thing. And at night, they always have some sort of social event where everybody kicks back and just meets each other. Fellow travelers also encourage you to get your foot out the door and you end up doing some things that you never imagined. If you're thinking that hostels aren't for you, let me guarantee you that they cater to all tastes. If you're a girl, you can stay in an all-girl dorm. They also have private rooms, four beds, six beds, eight beds, 15 beds, all the way to 20 probably. It might be a little harder to sleep with more people in your room, but I guarantee you'll meet more people as well. I can't even tell you how many hostels I've stayed in. I'm sure it's close to 100 or something and I don't remember having a negative experience. Of course, one hostel might be more comfortable than the other, but I've always had a great time in the end. I do plan on making a video about how to choose the best hostel for you, so let me know in the comments if that's something that you're interested in. So after you've already traveled the world a little, you will inevitably make friends from all parts. So when deciding on a travel destination, why not go visit one of those friends in their hometown? I'm definitely not telling you to invite yourself over to your friend's house to stay for a week or anything, but I'm sure they'll be happy to show you around. And if they do end up inviting you to stay over, you've saved yourself some travel bucks. Couch surfing, of course, is another great option for accommodation. There's tons of people out there willing to open Open their house up for you just because they want to meet some fellow travelers. Aside from offering you a bed or a couch, they will most likely be locals, so they're gonna have all these great tips about where to go in town, where to eat, etc. And surely great little tips about how to save even more while you're enjoying your stay. But of course do your research and check the reviews about the person you're gonna be staying with. <laughs> doesn't hurt to be safe. You need to avoid eating at restaurants. Most hostels do provide breakfast, so you can start your day off with that. Sneak a fruit or two into your day bag for later. And when you go about your day, you can just eat at local markets or enjoy some street food. That way you get amazing food for cheap and also soak in some of the culture. A great tip is to see where all the locals are eating. If you pass by a place and it's packed with locals, you definitely want to try that food. And before heading back to your accommodation, just stop by a local supermarket and buy some food to cook at home. Most hostels also have communal kitchens for that. And if I'm completely honest, when I'm traveling, sometimes I just skip lunch altogether. I'll just have a late breakfast at the hostel, maybe eat some fruit during the day, and have a nice dinner at a local market. Don't buy shit you don't need. Those little travel souvenirs do not define your travel experience, they just take up extra space and will probably end up breaking on the way back home anyways. Your money is much better spent on some sort of daily activity and those will provide you with more memories than any little souvenir or item of clothing could ever provide you. Volunteer work and mutual exchange is an amazing option for people that want to travel cheap. And there are so many websites out there that can help you find volunteer work in tons of destinations. So Wolf International is definitely one of them where you can do work on organic farms in exchange for accommodation and food. Other options include WorkAway and World Packers that tend to offer you jobs at hostels all around the world. 
you generally work three or four days out of the week and have food and accommodation provided, of course, which leaves you plenty of time to check out the city on your days off. In 2019, through WorkAway, I volunteered at a hostel in Valparaiso, Chile, and that was a great experience. So I definitely can recommend that. You need to watch out for those sneaky ATM fees. Bastards. Most banks, of course, will charge you a hefty fee when withdrawing money overseas. So when you do take money out, make sure that it's a large sum. Your hostel will most likely provide you with a locker, so you can just keep that money locked up in the hostel during the day. Put the amount of money that you're gonna spend that day in your wallet and just walk around with that. Okay, although this may seem like a really obvious tip, I do wanna get it in here because I'm not sure that everyone understands fully. Don't travel to expensive places. Go somewhere where the economy favors the currency that you actually have income in. That will definitely give you more bang for your buck, helping you travel cheaper and longer. After all, there's no amount of savvy budget tips that anyone can give you that would help you out if you're in a place that you just can't afford. I really do hope that these tips were of some value to you guys. If you want even more suggestions on how to book international flights, please check out the video that I've linked below. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to my channel so you get notified when I post more videos like this. I'll see you on the next one, gringos.